What's up guys, it's Jim with Awaken TCG, bringing you guys another One Piece card game video today, and today we are going to be going over all of the hits you can get out of an OP07 box. So I myself am going to about three pre-releases today, if everything goes well, opening a lot of packs, and I was just kind of wanting to go through and seeing what the best cards you can pull from them are. I'll be getting my boxes around a release date next week, but I can't lie, I'm very excited to dig into these packs and get some crazy hits for sure. So for me and for you guys, uh, just wanted to go over these cards. Uh, by the way, this is a post by this person on Reddit, so thank you for compiling every alt art and making these easy to cover. But Let's go ahead and get into them, starting with the leaders. And getting into the leader alt arts here. First up on the left, we have the dragon leader, which I would say is one of the worst, if not the worst alt art leader to pull, at least for me. Obviously, hitting a leader card alt art is always good. Uh, it's gonna maintain pretty decent value, just baseline always. But I'm not planning to play Dragon, um, and I know a lot of other people aren't really either. This leader is kind of boring uh, and also not very good. So definitely one I would not want to pull. Uh, Bonnie is arguably the best pull if you get an alt art leader. That it's either between that or the new Rob Lucci leader. I myself am going to play Rob Lucci, so obviously want to pull that. But Bonnie is probably going to be the most expensive alt art leader in this set. So if you pull an alt art, alt -art leader... This might be your one to pull. And then as for Boa, Boa is definitely middle of the ground, but it is Boa Hancock. There is no doubt this leader is going to go for a lot. And if you want to play Boa, this is a great alt art, probably one of the best alt art leaders they've ever made. And getting into the last three here, we have Foxy. And even though Foxy is not very good and probably not going to be worth too much, I would be happy pulling this card. Uh, it is one of the most hilarious alt arts I've ever seen, and I'm probably planning to just mess around with this leader. Um, but yeah, probably not going to go for too much. Rob Lucci is going to be your best or second best leader pull for sure if you're opening these packs after Bonnie or right before Bonnie. Uh, I am planning to play this leader, so if I can honestly pick one card to pull from these packs other than the manga, it would be Rob Lucci. And then last up is Vegapunk. Uh, Vegapunk is a kind of a funny leader that I'm also planning to uh, dig a little bit into, not take too seriously, but just play it for fun. Uh, so I would be fine with pulling this alt art, although I actually, out of all these new leaders, I don't really love this art compared to the rest. It's a bit more, uh, I don't know, less refined in my opinion, but it's definitely a good art nonetheless. And now getting into our secret rare alt arts here. These two, I've heard a lot of people say, are not as good as the normal arts. I don't know if I share that opinion. Um, especially once you see these in real life, they're going to be a lot more shiny. Especially with this fire effect, is going to look amazing once you have it in your hand. Um, especially this Acos Sabo, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting this as a Luchi player. So would love to pull this. Probably going to go for a lot on TCG player as well. Ace, same thing. This is a four of an NL. So any NL player that is going to want to be competitive is going to want this card. So even if you aren't planning on playing it, going to go for a lot on TCG player for sure. Next up, getting into our first three special arts here, our SPs for the set. We have the new Okiku card, which honestly might be one of the worst ones to pull. This isn't really ran anything except maybe like Red Green Odin, which... Like, nobody plays that anymore, and the deck's not very good. So, honestly, like, pulling an SP is always good. These are always going to be worth a lot, same as the leaders. But uh, if you're going to pull one, I would not want to be Okiku. Uh, now we have Izo in the middle here. Very, very nice, considering the Searcher does not have an Altar yet. Um, so if the Whitebeard Pirates, especially when, when Marco comes out, is going to be a big thing, this is going to be a great card to pull with a lot of future value for sure. And the three cost Del Flamingo. This card already has an alt art, but love this card. Uh, definitely would run it over the other alt art since the normal three cost Del Flamingo alt art, in my opinion, is eh, not the best. So uh, this one would be awesome, and I'm sure any Del Flamingo player that's trying to max rarity of their deck would much rather have four of this card for sure. Um, now getting into the last three specials is going to be first up Isho. 
Um, honestly, out of the special arts, uh, this is the worst one, and I don't think there's any arguing that. <laughs> um, like, the art itself isn't great, and there's just a lot of empty space. It's a really strange art. Like, half of this art is a building in the back. Like, sure, this will be shiny and stuff in real life, um, and it's gonna be rarer than a normal ACOS issue alt art, but honestly, uh, not great. Could see it not being worth a lot because of that reason, but it is like played in a lot of black decks, a lot of Luchi decks uh, to counter the meta. So I would be fine with pulling this and I would definitely be running it in my deck. In the middle here, here we have a five cost kid from OPO5, which is a fantastic altar. Uh, love this when he was defeated by Kaido. Um, do I think it's better than normal kid alt art? I don't know. Um, I think they're both really good, but obviously if you're trying to max rarity your deck, I think this is the one to go with. And on the right here is undoubtedly going to be the most expensive SP for sure. Hands down is going to be Onami. Uh, this alt art is awesome. I love this art. It's great. If we're going to do like a full scene in the alt art, this is what we should be doing. A lot going on. Just a fantastic art right not not what's going on with isho this is what we want to do also a massively playable card in like a ton of yellow decks so love this card going to be the most for sure no doubt about that now getting into our red alt arts here we have dragon eight cost and the three cost karina which is going to be getting the alt this set um so this dragon alt art is awesome guys this guy's done a few arts for the game and every one is an absolute banger this one included. Uh, Dragon is not uh, massively, uh, you know, contention in the meta, but I am planning on playing Red Purple Luffy, who 100% wants to run this card, so I would love to pull a Dragon, and he's probably going to go for a decent amount online as well. And for Karina, this card is played in just about nothing. Um, I'd say the only thing it has going for it is that it is a waifu card. Um, so you could say this has a bit of waifu tax, but I don't know how many Karina fans are really out there, so I could also see this being just a complete dud for sure. Next up, getting into the green alt arts here, we have first up on the left, 5 cost Bonnie, which is going to be massively playable in a lot of green decks, uh, mainly Bonnie herself. Uh, this alt art's great, love this, it's from her first appearance when she was, you know, being a glutton in uh, Shabondi, uh, great art, uh, playable card. This is going to go for a lot for sure. Waifu tax as well. In the middle here, we have Basil Hawkins, uh, four of staple and Bonnie. Uh, any Bonnie player is going to need this as a four of alt art if they're max rarity in their deck. So great card. If you're playing Bonnie, you 100% want to pull this. If you are not going to play Bonnie, this is a great card to trade or sell for sure. And on the right here, we have Otama. Fantastic card as well. Uh, played in pretty much every green Wano deck for the foreseeable future. Uh, I myself am planning to play black and green Perona, who runs for this card. So I would be completely fine with pulling this. This is a great alt art in itself, and it's probably going to go for a pretty good amount. Getting to the blue alt arts here on the left, we have the new four cost Jimbe which is going to be a massive staple in Blue Doflamingo and even Boa Hancock. So two decks that I think a lot of people are going to be really interested in playing. So for that reason, even though I know a lot of people aren't really fans of Jinbei, I love Jinbei, but for some reason Jinbei cards just don't go for a lot. I can see this not going for a lot, but it is massively playable, so it's probably going to be worth a decent amount. In the middle here, we have Trafalgar Law, a fan favorite character for sure, and also a four of staple in Doflamingo, and a lot of the times Boa as well. Um, great art. I really do like this art. Uh, right, four of staple in both those decks. This is going to be a really solid pull if you get it for sure. And on the right here is going to be Sengoku. Uh, only really deck I've seen this ran in is Boa. Uh, Doflamingo doesn't really run this card since bottom decking stuff after searching is kind of counterintuitive to your leader effect. But this is a pretty good alt art. Sengoku, definitely not a fan favorite character. So this is one I could see being worth like not a lot, even though it's playable in Boa. Uh, that is only one deck. So if you're planning on playing Boa, you want to pull this. If not, uh, you can probably consider this a dud. Getting into our purple alt arts here, we have on the left, the new Foxy 7 cost character alt art. I love this art. It is fantastic. Foxy is hilarious. But 
Obviously, this is only playable in Foxy himself. This is locked to Foxy Pirates, so only playable in one deck that is, sees no play in the meta. Uh, unfortunately, guys, this is going to be a bit of a dud. Definitely a fun collector's card, uh, or if you're trying to play Foxy for fun, you definitely want to pull this, but if you want nothing to do with Foxy, yeah, if you pull this, I would be pretty, <laughs> pretty disappointed. Uh, same thing on the right here for Porsche. Porsche is pretty much only played in Foxy. I've seen Raju builds that run Porsche as she can actually play out the small kids. Uh, like even a four cost uh, Ichiji, uh, which is a really good combo because you can play this and do Ichiji and do seven cost Ichiji, right? Draw one. It's a pretty strong combo for Raju, but unfortunately RP Law being like number one in the meta, that deck isn't really played. So bit of waifu tax on this. I could see it being more than Foxy, but... Um, you know, people do like Foxy as well, so these are probably going to be equally duds for sure. And next up, our last purple law third is going to be a Sanji 2K, which is like now a new four of staple in every purple deck, mainly RP Law. So for that reason, RP Law being the top deck, this Sanji is going to be a massive hit. Not to mention the alt art is awesome. Love the stealth black fit uh, and all this craziness going on in the background of this card. Going to look great, really shiny in real life for sure. And on the right here we have Stussy is going to be our card for pretty much only uh, Rob Lucci leader. I think a lot of Rob Lucci's are actually choosing to not include her too, which is a bit strange to me. I mean, I guess if decks like RP Law are our main contender, you really never want to draw this card. So I can see why this isn't getting ran. But I myself am gonna I'm gonna run this card and definitely want to pull it for sure. Waifu tax is gonna go crazy on it as well. And getting into our yellow alt arts now, we have four cost Frankie uh, 2K. So this card is obviously made for Vegapunk, but it would not be worth a lot if it was only good in Vegapunk. This card is mainly played as a four up in Enel. So. If you are an Enel player, you want four of this card. This is a great art as well. I love Frankie's Egghead fit. It looks really, really nice. And I'm really glad they did him justice on this card because they tend to overlook characters like Frankie, but glad we gave him the love he deserved this set. So definitely a great hit if you pull Frankie for sure. And on the right here, Lilith is pretty much only playable in Vegapunk. Uh, obviously, I don't know how uh, good or popular Vegapunk's gonna be. I'm gonna say not good on either of those. But I do think this card is going to warrant pretty high waifu tax. This art is pretty insane. Um, so if you do pull this card and you're not planning to play Vegapunk right, good collector's item for sure. Also might go for a decent amount. And our last two here that we're gonna talk about is going to be our six cost. Bull Hancock standard alt art, which is going to be for normal people that are trying to play blue decks. They're going to want four of this card. Um, it's going to be really good in Doflamingo and Boa. So really, really good card and love the art as well. This is a great alt art for sure. For Waifu, uh, Boa Hancock even, this is going to go for a lot of money um, and going to be really, really uh, sought after for Boa and Doflamingo players. And on the right here, obviously, if you guys did not know, Bo Hancock is going to be our manga card for this set. This is undoubtedly the number one chase card for anybody opening packs of OPO7, myself included. Uh, this might rival, I don't think it'll rival Gear Fifth Luffy in terms of price, but it's probably going to be, just putting it out there now, the second most expensive manga of all time. I'm just going to guess that's kind of what it was doing over in Japan price-wise. And I could see it doing the same thing here. People love Boa Hancock. And putting her on a manga is just way too powerful. So definitely going to be my number one chase card. And I think anybody's number one chase card for the OPO7 set. So really looking forward to this uh, set, guys. Going to be doing a pre-release in about two hours now. And really excited to go to that. So... Definitely want to open a lot of these cards. There's actually very few misses for sure, especially if you're trying to play some of these uh, underplayed leaders like Vegapunk or Foxy. There's really not a lot of cards you can whiff on. All of the hits this set are honestly really good. So really looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. But anyways, this has been Jim with Awakened TCG, and I'm going to head out here. Peace.